The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. After Jesus had said this, he departed and hid from them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Some Greeks wish to see Jesus. They want to accept Jesus as the one who reveals God. And in their presence and in their desire, sir, we wish to see Jesus. Jesus sees that the hour has come for him to be glorified. The presence of the Greeks make true what the Pharisees have said. The whole world is going after him. And so Jesus um, declares that the hour has come for him to be glorified. He um, explains what this means um, in terms of the cross. He bids farewell using the image of um, a grain of wheat falling into the earth. And um, then he departs and he hides himself. The next time the world sees Jesus, Jesus will be lifted up from the earth, um, dying on a cross driving out the ruler of this world and drawing all people, all creation, the whole world to himself. The good news on this Tuesday of Holy Week is that the death and resurrection of Jesus have global implications. Jesus not only saves individuals, but he saves everything. Thanks be to God. Uh, we too are like the Greeks, I think. These days we too wish to see Jesus. 
perhaps desperately uh, we wish to see Jesus. And Jesus tells us where to look. Jesus tells us to look to the cross. But, you know, we can't go back in time to Golgotha and see Jesus on the cross. We can't even leave the house. So where do we look for Jesus? I, I have found the cross to be um, a hint, an echo, a pointer, and a touchstone um, to Jesus' cross. Um, because it not only reminds me of the crucifixion, but it reminds me of people, of communities, who bearing Christ's cross um, are grains of wheat and willingly, lovingly, knowingly have um, given up their life for the sake of others. Um, for the sake of me. And so um, on this Tuesday in Holy Week, I went on a pilgrimage in my house. I went and spent time at each of the crosses in our house, and I invited and I invite you to do the same. Um, we have six, five crosses in our house. Uh, one is um, what, what, there are one each um, at the doors we in which we come and go. Um, there is one from the community at the University of Notre Dame, which has a, a thing to put water in. And remember, we're baptized. It's empty right now uh, by the front door. And there is a cross given to me for ordination by the lady who lived across the street from my parents. Very Catholic looking um, cross because she was very Catholic and said the rosary for me every day. It is um, as you come in through the garage door, outside our bedroom door. So that's two. Uh, third, there is a cross in our bedroom that was Kathy's aunt's. Um, fourth, there is a, a tapestry of a cross, an Irish cross, um, that uh, hangs um, in the foyer of our house. And that came from um, my friend, our friend, Tim and Cindy Olson. Tim is now a pastor um, in Ankeny, Iowa. Uh, downstairs in my office, I'm looking at it right now, hangs a cross um, that uh, a seminary classmate gave me at the end of my first year in seminary. Um, and around my neck, I wear the cross that you all have entrusted to me um, as your bishop, and I'll wear it till it's no longer my time to wear it, and then we will pass it on to the next bishop. Um, closing my eyes, I can see three more crosses. Uh, one hangs in the hallway in the cabin. Um, it's made of olive wood. It came from Bethlehem in Judea when I went there in 1987. I brought it back and gave it to my parents, and it hung in their house for a lot of years. And eventually, when we got the cabin, my mother gave it back to me. And now it hangs in the cabin. So it's kind of a remembrance of my parents, even though it originally came from me. And in my study in the cabin, um, there's a, a stone cross that a student gave me. So in my office, there are two other crosses. One is the large wooden crucifix that I brought back from um, for myself from this trip to Bethlehem in Judea in 1987. It is hung in all of my offices over the years. So over time, it's picked up memories from all of those congregations and faith communities, the seminary. It's hung in all of my offices. And then there's another cross over in the corner that nobody sees um, because it's, I can see, if you've been to my office, when I sit in the blue Lazy Boy in my office, I can see it. Um, if you're sitting with me, you're sitting with your back to it. It's a metal cross that my aunt and grandmother gave me um, that has a dove on it. So it reminds me of the Holy Spirit. So as I close my eyes, I see all of them, even though I cannot get to them. 
And um, right now I anticipate seeing a cross that I can just say is being made for me, a very special cross that a friend is making. Um, and um, it's, it's fun. I'm living vicariously as I watch and get updates on him making it. So in the crosses, um, we get memories. We connect with people who bear the cross, who as grains of wheat lay down their life willingly for others, even for us. And we are reminded of Jesus who laid down his life for the world. We desperately wish to see Jesus. So I invite you to look to the cross. And if you don't have a cross hanging in your house, maybe this is a good day to hang one. Draw it on a piece of paper. Maybe that could be a family project. Um, make a cross and hang it. And remember that when Jesus was lifted up from the earth on the cross, he, um, he died on the cross, yes. He also um, drove out the evil ruler of this world and draws all people, all creation, the whole world to himself. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, your Son chose the path that led to pain before joy and to the cross before glory. Plant Jesus' cross in our hearts that in its power and love we may come at last to joy and glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.